And last but not least, 1440. Good morning! It's Thursday, July 9th, and we're covering the mounting debate over how to open the nation's schools in the fall. Ah ha ha! Need to know. New York City limits fall schooling. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced yesterday in-classroom instruction would be limited to one to three days per week when students return to school in the fall in a continuing effort, in a continuing effort to blunt the spread of the coronavirus. The school district is the nation's largest, with nearly 1.1 million students, and the decision to only partially reopen may influence education officials around the country. How to safely reopen schools has become a principal and seemingly intractable challenge. The virus is highly transmissible indoors, but districts are ill-equipped for distance learning, which also risks leaving behind lower-income families. Many educators fear for their health. At the same time, working-class families struggle to watch children during weekdays, and the economy is likely to sputter along until parents fully return to work. Mm -hmm. President Trump said yesterday he would consider cutting funding for schools that do not fully reopen in the fall. Yes, please do. Please do cut funding to uh, the New York School District. Yes, please. Do so. Uh, apparently... Federal funding accounts for just 10% of school funding. But hey, that 10% is probably still a really big number. You, you, you pull back that 10%, Trump. Do it. Fucking do it. The news comes as new cases in the U.S. passed 59,000 in a single day, setting a fresh record. Look at the fucking death rates, though. It's really low, especially compared to months ago. Some of the rise is due to increased testing, but not all. New cases are dramatically outpacing new testing capacity in states like Florida, Texas, and Arizona. Yeah, you know, the border states where we need to get back to securing the border for the health of our citizens. If you're so, if we're so worried about this scary virus, then we should be protecting everybody. That's the big concern, right? It's protecting everybody because that's what we gotta do. The collective good is what's most important, even if you're, you have a skewed view of what the collective good actually is. But if that's what's most important, right? So stop infections from coming up, crossing the border, and infecting our citizens, because that is what's happening. The U.S. has reported more than 3 million total cases, with 132,309 alleged deaths as of this morning. Finally, check out the beta version of Johns Hopkins University's new project, an interactive map tracking school reopenings. And just, I say, yes, please, President Trump and Betsy DeVos, please, please pressure governors to reopen schools. Don't let this stupidity continue. Please. Harvard and MIT bring visa lawsuit. Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology filed suit yesterday over new federal guidelines that would require international students to take in-person classes or risk being deported. The new rules announced yesterday affect an estimated 1.1 million students holding F1 and M1 visas. The former typically attend academic institutions while the latter pertain to those receiving vocational training. I can't imagine that this is really such a new rule. Um, surely, in the past, there has been an understanding that if you're going to be here, you're going to be taking classes in person. I mean, if, if, you could, if you're just going to do it online completely, you can, can't you do that from your home country? Can you take online college classes from a different country? 
That would be interesting to know. While less than 10% of universities say they will go fully remote, many are leaning toward allowing 40 to 60% of students to return to campus in person. Okay, so just make sure that all of your your exchange students, whatever, the, whatever they're called, are a part of that 40 to 60%. School officials said the new rules force institutions into scenarios which may compromise student health. You mean those, those young people who are the lowest risk? More broadly, some fear foreign student enrollment, which collectively accounts for an estimated $45 billion in annual tuition costs and living expenses, will plummet. See where international students are concentrated here. So it's about the money. That's, that's all it is. It's just the money. Religious groups win in court. Religious organizations notched wins yesterday as the Supreme Court handed down decisions in two closely watched cases. In the first, the court ruled 7-2 to two that federal employment discrimination laws do not apply to teachers at religious schools. The plaintiffs, two Catholic school teachers, separately argued their firings violated federal law. One alleged she was fired after being diagnosed with breast cancer. The other alleged age discrimination. The court's ruling effectively concluded the reasons for termination were irrelevant under the ministerial exception, which lets religious institutions freely choose who will fill leadership roles. I'm pretty sure those are probably not the real reasons, so yeah. In the second case, also a 7-2 ruling, the court upheld the Trump administration's rollback of an Affordable Care Act requirement that employer-sponsored health insurance plans include birth control coverage. Ha ha ha. The new rules allow businesses to claim a religious or moral exemption, opting for plans that don't include contraceptives. Between 70,000 and 126,000 women could be affected by the decision. A decision on whether the president's financial records must be made accessible is expected today, the last day of the court's current term. Eh. I don't really get why he's being so uh, uptight with his financial records. Perhaps it's just a distraction. Anyway, I I think it's kind of silly that Catholics don't allow birth control. You know, because if you're preventing a pregnancy, then you're not actually killing a life because you have not yet created a life. Same with uh, Plan B. That's preventing the creation of a life, not killing an already created life. But I do understand that the uh, biblical purpose of sex is to procreate. And if you're not doing that, if you're just doing it recreationally, not procreationally, then uh, you aren't fulfilling the commandment to go forth and multiply. I'm not saying that's one of the Ten Commandments. It's a, it's a command. It's a it's a it's a it's a mandate in the Bible. Anyway, um, be fruitful and multiply. Anyway, I I do understand that, but I I do also think that it's a little silly. But you know religious freedom we are supposed to oops we are supposed to respect all religions and the uh beliefs thereof so yeah i think this is good premium coffee delivered fresh from yes please Imagine a restaurant that spends all of its culinary energy on creating one perfect plate of food a week. A compilation of the best ingredients available, each prepared specifically to best play its role in the dish. Always delicious and always unique. Yes, Please takes this approach to coffee. For them, it's all about exploring what is possible with what is available. Exploring what is possible with what is available. I'm not sure exploring was the right word there. Anyway, whatever. Every release of beans... I think their copy, their copywriter needs some work. Every release of beans is ex- 
expertly sourced, roasted, and blended, then delivered right to your door. The blends are new every week, and somehow each week is always better than the last. Always new, always fresh, and always delicious. Coffee Bar Caliber Brews, Coffee Bar Caliber Brews, and then some from the comfort of your kitchen. So whether you're already a coffee connoisseur or just want to upgrade your morning, Yes Please is the brand for you. Bags of fresh beans start at $17 shipped. 1440 subscribers can check it out now for $5 off your first order. Please support our sponsors. In the know. Sports, entertainment, and culture. Glee actress Naya Rivera missing after swimming in a Los Angeles lake. Police began emergency search after Rivera's four-year-old son was found alone in a boat. Poor little boy. Four major film festivals. Toronto, Telluride... Toronto, Telluride, Venice, and New York to join forces for movie lineups this fall. ABC to reboot The Wonder Years with director Lee Daniels and a black cast. Oh, brother. Do, do, I, do I need to go into this? Um, make your own stories. That's... Just in, enjoy... Enjoy... The already existing things that just dared to have white people in it. And create your own stories. Why is that? Why? 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 Why is this such a thing? Always with the remaking of things for black people. <sighs> black people can enjoy white people things. White people can enjoy black people things. I think white people would enjoy black people things a lot more if it wasn't things that they've already seen that just had different colored people in it. Be creative. I'm, I, I find it strange that I'm saying this, but be more like... Uh, shit, what's his name? Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele might have some weird ideas sometimes, but... but uh, and I hear tell that the Twilight Zone sucks right now, but, oh, which is actually a remake. But anyway, he actually has done some original things, and that is huge in comparison to the norm. So, this, stop with the, the, I think the whole country at this point must be tired of remakes. Major League Soccer returns with all teams except Dallas playing in the MLS. With all teams except Dallas playing in the MLS is back tournament. Oh, that's the, right, that's the name. MLS is back tournament. Orlando City beats Inter Miami 2-1. to one. Ivy League cancels all fall sports, including football, over coronavirus concerns. Cowards. Stanford to cut 11 varsity sports. Amazon follows retail giants Walmart and Target in pulling all Washington Redskins merchandise from its website. Ugh. So Nike, Walmart, Target, and Amazon. That is so fucked up. However, you can still buy things directly from the team, most likely. I mean, you can buy... I know you can buy things directly from the Cowboys, so I'm pretty sure it's probably the same for all teams. And the NFL itself, I haven't heard about their official shop pulling merchandise. So there's that, too. Science and Technology. National Science Foundation reveals first details on actions taken against researchers who violate rules on disclosing foreign funding. Aha. Uh -huh. The agency has rescinded funds from rescinded fun funds from or reprimanded up to 20 grantees since 2018. Good. Stop selling our shit to China, y'all. Engineers demonstrate the ability to connect artificial atoms, point defects in microscopically thin diamond. Engineers demonstrate the ability to connect artificial atoms. Artificial atoms point defects in microscopically thin diamond with guided light providing a path to a scalable quantum computer chip. 
Polynesians made contact with Native, Native South Americans much earlier than previously thought, new genetic analysis finds. Researchers believe the seafaring population potentially navigated 2,300 miles to Peru, around 1,100 to 1,300 A.D. That's Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. Business and Markets, brought to you by The Ascent. Warren Buffett donates $2.9 billion in Berkshire Hathaway stock to charity. The 89-year-old has donated more than $37 billion since 2006. Parent company of Quicken Loans, the country's largest mortgage lender, files for IPO. Dan Gilbert, majority owner and owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, to hold voting control after IPO. Retailer Brooks Brothers files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy amid panic to close approximately 50 of 250 U.S. stores. United Airlines to send layoff warnings to 36,000 workers to comply with WARN Act. Worst case scenario would equate to roughly half of U.S. workforce. Holy shit. 0% APR and 100% an insane deal. This card offers 0% APR for 18 months on balance transfers, giving you a year and a half to save big. Enjoy that and no annual fee. Probably the ascent. Politics and world affairs. Internal multi-year audit commissioned by Facebook slams the company for failing to make changes that resulted in a widespread setback for civil rights. Internal multi-year audit commissioned by Facebook slams the company. A widespread setback for civil rights, I am so sure. Read full report. Because free speech is just so bad for civil rights. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, who testified in an impeachment trial against President Trump, retires. Sources say a promotion to full colonel, which was approved by the Pentagon and sent to the White House this week, was likely to be blocked. Okie dokie. Police body camera transcripts. Alexander Vindman. I remember the name, but I don't remember what he said. Police body camera transcripts from the arrest and death of George Floyd in Minneapolis released. Okay. Jackson, Mississippi City Council votes 5-1 to one to take down statue of former President Andrew Jackson. You fuckers. Jackson, Mississippi. I'm just saying. Are you gonna are you gonna change your name next? I wouldn't be surprised. In depth. How to reopen schools from science. It's top of mind for every parent, teacher, and public official across the country, but there's no cohesive strategy in sight. Here are some lessons learned from other countries across the globe on how to reopen schools while maintaining public health. Honestly, with all this, uh, all this germophobia, I'm guessing public health is probably at an all-time high. That's just a guess, mind you. But consider the possibility of that. Realize that we've always been okay with public health being, you know, where it has been before. So if public health is, as an, is at an all-time high right now, this is just ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. But even when this is over, I bet you that public health will uh, drop. Not, not because of the coronavirus, but because of everything else. Because of, of the, uh, what, all the medical procedures that are being put off by hospitals and, and patients because of our compromised immune systems from all the mask wearing and the hand washing and the and the sanitizer using can our ballots be both secret and secure not when they're mail in from new yorker 
Is there any way to know, really know, that the votes we cast are delivered to and accurately tallied by vote counters, short of publishing a massive public list? Mathematician Josh Benalo thinks so, and he's banking on advanced cryptographic technology to do it. Honestly, I think when it comes to voting, we should be going more low-tech, not, not higher-tech. Not, 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 not more advanced. I think that we should go back to low-tech. But without, without the mail-in part. All right, because that really does compromise security. Upgrade your morning. It's time to get a coffee subscription that works for your tastes, schedule, and budget. Yes, please, coffee roasts incredible beans every week and ships them out immediately to members' doors across the U.S. Shipping is always free, and bags start at $17, depending on the size and timing that works for you. Skip a shipment or cancel any time, but we don't think you'll want to. Buy today for $5 off your first order. Please support our sponsors. Etc. Usain Bolt's daughter is perfectly named. I, uh, what was it? I read that last night, and it was on the ESPN Daily. It's Olympia Lightning Bolt. Isn't that awesome? Kanye West explains his presidential platform. The 2020 Audubon Photography Award winners revealed. And a Midwest Storm Chaser's most dramatic shots. This startup wants to make dairy cows a thing of the past. No. Japan bans screaming on roller coasters. What? What, because of germs? Oh my goodness. What happens if you can't help it and you let one out? Are you going to get fined? Are they going to take you to jail? What a comet looks like from the International Space Station. A group of rare gorillas in Nigeria caught on camera with babies. Baby gorillas, right? Clickbait. When life gives you a billion locusts, make dinner. Oh, God, gross. Yes, I know. I know. It Sometimes it has to be done. But, oh, gross. History book. President Zachary Taylor dies of cholera while in office, 1850. One of a handful of presidents to die while in office, I believe. Especially, it's especially a small number if you take out assassinations. Fourteenth Amendment ratified in U.S., granting full citizenship to African Americans, 1868. Very nice. First Wimbledon tournament begins, 1877. Happy birthday, Tom Hanks, 1956. I didn't realize Wimbledon was that old. That's cool. Happy birthday, Tom Hanks, 1956. Happy birthday, musician Courtney Love, 1964. A hero is someone who voluntarily walks into the unknown. Tom Hanks. Eh, I suppose in one way. There's probably, I think there's a little bit more to it than that, but yeah, you got that. That is all for today. Thank you, 1440, and yes, please, goodbye.